Well, we are back. I know it's lunchtime, but you really need to attend this presentation. Our next speaker is Ovidiu Spas, a senior full stack JavaScript engineer located in Timisoara with a very vast experience in the field. He will talk to us today about React Node and Monorepos using NX. I'm personally very excited to find out more about it. And also don't forget to send us your questions in the My Connector platform and we will address them at the end. Ovidio, you have now the stage. Thank you. Uh, it's great to, to be here to give this presentation. Uh, I'll quickly share the screen so I can start presenting. Okay, so I hope uh, everything is visible. Okay. So uh, React node and monorepos using NX. Uh, to reiterate a, a bit of uh, info about myself, uh, I'm a senior uh, full stack JavaScript uh, engineer from Timisoara, Romania. Uh, boy, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, I've been working uh, 10 plus years on the platform. Uh, aka the, the web as uh, we might know it i work for uh, startups agencies multinational companies in different kinds of setups on uh, product uh, oriented companies in and in outsourcing too uh, some of the most important and interesting clients i had the privilege and honor to work for uh, were national geographic Pearson Education and the Telegraph. Uh, also, in my spare time, I like practicing uh, boxing and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And uh, if you know better ways to cope with burnout than those two, uh, please let me know after, after this talk. Okay, so uh, yeah, what exactly is an X? This is the, the tagline from their uh, from their website. Uh, it states a smart and extensible build framework uh, to help you architect, test, and build at any scale. The most important words from my point of view here is architect and scale. Uh, it's a framework, uh, like a meta framework uh, that you can use the inside uh, different other plugins and, and frameworks. And uh, honestly, it's one of the most interesting pieces of technology that I've seen in the last uh, couple of years. It's very promising and uh, hope I'll get your interest uh, about it by the, the end of this presentation. Uh, okay, so who uses NX? Just to, to clear out this, the fact that it's not just a toy uh, hobby project built by someone in their garage, and uh, it might be a wise idea to use it yourself on, on your projects. Uh, a couple of clients are of NX or Accenture, uh, American Airlines, Audi, FedEx, uh, Cisco, Capital One, General Motors, uh, Microsoft, Red Hat, uh, Telecom, and, and others. So uh, basically, it's, it's a tool that already is uh, recognized by big names and big players in the, in the worldwide uh, industry. I'll uh, try to present uh, the main features uh, during this demo, uh, and I'll, I'll go over them uh, quickly right now. Uh, feature one uh, of NX is that uh, you get easy bootstrapping uh, projects using initialization presets. Now, what does that mean? Uh, as an architect or technical lead, when you start a new project, you probably have a pretty good idea of what major technologies you're gonna use. 
on the front end, on the back end, you probably know you're going to use the React or Angular or Vue. And on the back end, Express, uh, Nest, what, what have you, technologies. So uh, wouldn't it be cool if instead of spending maybe up to a week in some cases, uh, wearing stuff from the beginning of, of the project, like setting up LinkedIn, end-to-end uh, -end testing frameworks, uh, unit testing frameworks, uh, uh, maybe storybook, etc. that uh, you can just bootstrap uh, the project uh, choosing a few technologies that uh, the initialization step and everything gets generated for you out of the box that that would be really really helpful and we're, we're gonna see about that in a few minutes uh, another feature is that uh, it's pluggable meaning that it's composed of plugins and there are a few official plugins plus community plugins that uh, the javascript community can can add and uh, those plugins have uh, code generators. So besides uh, the way you initially bootstrap your uh, application, at any point uh, in time, you can perhaps decide that you want uh, another, uh, I don't know, zone of your app to use view, but you bootstrap it with uh, Angular, no problem. You can simply, simply do that. Uh, it's framework independent and you get uh, abstracted CLI commands, meaning that regardless of uh, different types of technologies, uh, you still use the same commands like build, test, end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, etc. So it's the CLI abstracts all the individual technology CLI commands. It uh, has first-class monorepo support, enabling uh, easy code sharing. And this is another huge uh, feature from my point of view. Uh, probably the ones uh, of you who already work with monorepos know that uh, this is very powerful. Like instead of creating uh, libraries and uh, individually exporting those and publishing them to MPM, you get to keep everything in the same repo and it's a lot easier to develop than uh, linking MPM packages and what have you. Um, it's easy to create a project design system. Um, of course, if you work for a pretty large client, it already has its uh, marketing, branding, preferred color schemes, etc. So it, uh, most definitely you will probably need to, to have a, a design system of components. Uh, I don't know, overwriting the default uh, material UI framework or uh, whatever. And it, it, it's easy to, to do that with NX. Uh, you get smart builds. This again is another monorepo feature uh, of, of NX. So if you end up having lots of uh, sub projects in your uh, monorepo workspace, uh, it can start to get really tedious and take a lot of uh, a lot of time to roll to run all the tests for uh, every every part of your project. So uh, what's smart about NX it it, it can uh, detect exactly what uh, projects were affected by some changes that, that you do. Uh, most of the commands are uh, CLI-based, terminal-based, but uh, if you prefer to use a more visual uh, approach, uh, NX has also a VS Code plugin that you can install, and it's maintained by, by them, and everything that you do via command line, it's uh, easily, easily doable from inside VS Code. You also get a fancy dependency graph to interact with your workspace, and it helps you visualize again when you have a lot of modules and libraries, uh, what depends on what. Uh, it, it's really cool. I'm gonna show it uh, by the end of the presentation. Uh, another really interesting feature that blew my mind was the uh, distributed uh, 
cloud task execution and computation caching, meaning that uh, if you run a command against the code base, uh, an NX command, and after a while you run it again, but haven't updated anything uh, in a code, for example, if you do a rebuild or something like that, uh, if you detect that nothing changes, it pulls uh, all the compiled uh, assets and even the terminal output from a cache that NX skips and basically subsequent commands run almost instantly, including tests and uh, linking, etc. And uh, you can even go a step further uh, with distributed uh, cloud uh, caching, meaning that uh, you can enable what a plugin of theirs that uh, is called NX Cloud. And that uh, enables you, for example, if you run a build command locally, all uh, the output and uh, assets and etc. are uh, taken to, to, to the cloud. And for example, next morning, if uh, a colleague of yours comes to work, pulls the latest changes from, from main and runs the build, instead of uh, building it herself, uh, she can already get the pre-compiled builds and uh, everything just just instantly, which is a feature that is really helpful for large projects where the build may take minutes uh, to, to, or even, even more than that. And uh, the last uh, really helpful thing is uh, perhaps you're seeing uh, lots of libraries, different technologies, NPM packages, it can become a mess to maintain. It has automatic uh, updates, meaning that you can run an NX command to update your whole workspace. And uh, it, uh, besides upgrading uh, libraries, for example, if a storybook uh, four gets upgraded to five, there might be some configuration uh, related breaking changes, so not your code, but the way a certain uh, technology is configured. Uh, it also keeps track of that via a migration file that you check out and check into your repository. And again, when a colleague comes to, to work, pulls the changes and runs the migration, it uh, automatically installs all the new packages, but also uh, performs the necessary automated code changes on the on the configuration uh, files of OpenX. Uh, supported technologies. I'm gonna really quickly go over what uh, what you can currently use with NX on the front end of the, your popular frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, Storybook, Gatsby, and Web Components. On the back end, Node, Express, Next, Nest. Uh, you can even use Go and uh, C Sharp, Spring Boot, and Serverless. These last few are community-based plugins, so it's not necessarily just a JavaScript-specific framework, but it's mostly around JavaScript with some additional uh, languages and features. Then on mobile, you can uh, run React Native, Ionic, uh, both versions of uh, Angular Ionic and uh, React Ionic, and Flutter. And for testing, you have pre-configured uh, Jest and for unit tests and Cypress for end-to-end -end tests. And uh, of course, the list of community plugins as I mentioned is ever-growing and yeah. If you check it out from time to time, even more stuff can can pop in here. Regarding styling uh, options, in any front-end framework uh, project, you can get to choose what uh, you would like to use. Is it plain CSS, even the, the modular modularized version uh, of CSS modules, uh, SAS, less, or even frameworks in the React were like style components, emotion, or style JSX. So if you start an application, create React app inside an app, you get to choose any of these, or if you start a Next.js application, again, you can choose any of these options. And everything is wired up uh, 
together by by NS. What uh, I hope to get done in this demo and to, to quickly show you are, uh, let's say, six mini demos. Uh, of course, basic stuff, not complete application because of, of the time. Uh, so the first thing, uh, we'll, we will try to create a uh, single page, page application using uh, React on the front end, have a REST API for it uh, on the back end using uh, Express. Uh, also, uh, if we have an app, uh, the marketing team will probably require us to have a presentational website or page for it. So we're going to do that uh, using NX. Another popular option would have been uh, Gatsby, but uh, if we basically chose Next.js instead of Gatsby, uh, mostly out of being more and more popular. But both are good uh, choices because you get uh, server render pages and for presentational stuff uh, it's, it's great to have everything uh, statically generated for for you uh, another thing uh, of course on any project you will probably uh, find yourself creating the uh, so-called utilities folder but we're gonna make a, a publishable npm library for for it for the utilities that we're gonna use just one I, I'm having in mind. Uh, also, create one shared component uh, to so we can use on the app front end app itself uh, the spa in React, and also in the presentational uh, website because we both use React technology, so you can use a shareable React component in in the app uh, bootstrap with create react app and the same uh, on uh, next.js page and the, uh, the last thing that comes out of the box is a shareable uh, type interface library uh, on annex you, you, the default is to use uh, typescript but you don't uh, really have to the config files are using typescript but you can generate uh, Plain plain JS if you like, but if you if you do uh, use TypeScript, it's really common to, to have a shared uh, types to use both on front end and on on back end. And NX uh, is this out of the out of the box. Uh, batteries included. Uh, we will have uh, code formatting via Prettier, linking via ESLint. Uh, unit tests via JS, and to end uh, via Cypress, uh, documentation over components uh, using Storybook, and uh, even some easy to, to install plugins for VS Code that the, the workspace that we're going to generate recommends to, to use. A lot, a lot, a lot uh, of stuff that we get basically for free and this, this is why it speeds up development by by a huge margin some uh, learning resources uh, that i displayed here uh, you can see the search for the official react uh, node and there's also even an angular uh, uh, intro and uh, also, some of the one of the employees uh, of Narwhal, which is the company that develops uh, NX, has a free full hour course. Uh, I think it's an hour and a half on uh, on iPad that you can can watch to go more and more in that. Uh, the framework itself is pretty easy to use. It's even if it gives a lot of uh, lots of features and options, it uh, it favors configuration uh, instead of convention. So it's not like Rails, for example, when you have to just know where to put certain stuff. You you can configure everything via to to file. A video, a video. Sorry to interrupt you for one second. We are not hearing you very well. Maybe you can I don't know play a bit with the mic or do something so okay. in order to hear you better. Uh, how about now? Is it better? Uh, I think so. 
it seems a bit okay. more clear. Okay, I'll try to speak a bit louder. Is it okay now? Okay, hopefully. Yes. Uh, if, yeah, if you continue uh, hearing problems or something, just let me know and I'll fiddle with the, the settings. So, uh, yeah, I was uh, on to the last slide anyway uh, of the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I just want to say that you can contact me for any questions uh, after this talk, on preferably on Twitter. Uh, my DMs are open for any questions or anything, and also uh, that's my, my LinkedIn profile right there. Okay, so that uh, talk out of, out of the way. Uh, let's switch to, to some coding. Uh, I have some pre-configured commands and the uh, repo that I'm going to switch branches over just because that running everything by hand will take a lot of time and uh, we there are many features that I want to go through so I'm not gonna type everything by, by hand I will paste different stuff but uh, hopefully you can follow along okay the first thing sorry about if this space is uh, really uh, fast and trying to cover uh, as many stuff uh, as possible just to, to make you uh, interested about, uh, about this. And, uh, okay, the first thing I'm in a TMP folder. First command that we're gonna use is uh, general, it generates an NX workspace. It uses MPX, which you probably know is uh, the npm utility for not necessarily installing some tool on your uh, machine, just using it temporarily to, to create uh, something. I'm gonna run the command and I see that uh, hopefully as well, I, uh, the font is big enough uh, for everyone to, to see. Uh, the first thing it asks, what kind of workspace do we want to start with? And here I have all the options that I just mentioned, and I will choose React plus uh, Express because we want to create a full stack uh, framework. I'll give an uh, application name of to do. For example, also note that uh, I'm giving it a name here to the workspace uh, PW2021. This is usually the company. Uh, the company namespace that you're creating the project for. Uh, okay. Uh, application name to those. And uh, now I get to choose the uh, formatting style that I'm, the CSS style that I'm using in the app. I'll choose the uh, CSS. And also, what I just mentioned about the Annex Cloud for uh, storing all your, your peers to their temporary cloud for faster. Uh, faster builds for other colleagues. I'm not gonna use this uh, right now because it, uh, it might make some commands a bit, uh, a bit slow. So I'm going to select no, and it's going to install uh, the whole Annex uh, workspace based on what I already uh, selected. Now I'm gonna stop this command because it's can take up to maybe five minutes and we don't have much time. And I'm going, going to CD into a already created project. It's just the, the minimum what the output of that command would have been. And uh, let's work on visual code to see what, uh, what uh, we, we have here. Okay. If we look in the Explorer uh, side of, of visual code, the first thing that we notice is a, a VS code and an extension file. And uh, this basically uh, 
recommends us to use certain plugins if we want to. And if I hit uh, command shift P and search for uh, extensions recommended, or we are going to show the recommended extension. Uh, we have this file that it can be checked in, in the repo. You can basically make sure that every person working uh, uh, inside this project will uh, be suggested to, to use this, uh, these plugins, which is really helpful if you have uh, lots, of, lots of people working remote, uh, etc. I, I already have uh, them installed, of course, because I tested this, <laughs> this uh, app before. So uh, to run the run the app, let's see what we actually have, and then we'll go we're gonna go through to the files. Uh, I'm going. I have two options. First is to run uh, each app individually. So we have uh, we have the React to do front end app, and we also have the the yeah, uh, rest side of it. I'm opening here two, two terminals so I can uh, run the commands. By the way, you will notice uh, the command starts with yarn and x run something. Uh, and that is why, because I chose not to uh, install the NX uh, CLI globally, it's more recommended uh, in these late days not to install global npm stuff so uh, basically yarn uses the nx cli that uh, the create uh, workspace installed in the bin folder so that's why commander prefix with yarn or probably npm if you choose to, to run npm but uh, as a note, if you really want to, you can globally install the install uh, the NX CLI and you get rid of the yarn part in front of every command. So uh, yeah, let's start the, the app and the, the API. You can probably, I don't know if you see very much here. Uh, this uh, starts to create React uh, app and this starts an Express API. And if we open it on port 4200 in the browser, just a second. Yeah. Here is what well, uh, what we we get uh, so far. So uh, this is the, the React application, and under the hood, it performs the get request to to get the this welcome to API message from uh, from the backend from the REST API. Okay, let's quickly see, um, besides uh, running the, the application, how the workspace is structured. You basically get an apps uh, directory and the libs directory. Uh, with NX, you can basically bootstrap apps and libs. And what's the difference between those is that apps are more like a skeleton of, of your application uh, containing, uh, I don't know, routing, uh, data, top level data management and so forth. And these are like uh, libs are like uh, main features of your application. So it's easy to, to split your apps like, like that. And of course, different libraries. Uh, we can see the API uh, app that got generated. 
internal internal express app. And we can show it. That has a get route for your classic, uh, really simple uh, express application. And uh, the boost folder contains the front end part. Uh, and uh, yeah, it basically has a React uh, use effect that when we upload, uh, fetches the API and gets, uh, gets the, the message. Uh, and what's interesting to note, as I said, you get the shared type interfaces. And that this is how you get the, the message type, both here and uh, in, the, in the API app that uh, NX generated for us in the lib API interfaces folder. And this is basically where you're going to add all other kinds of types to be shared be between the, the two. Okay, we also noticed that in the apps folder we get uh, to do end to end, basically for every front end uh, type of application, be it started with create React app or uh, uh, NextJS or whatever, you also get generated an end to end test folder that contains. Uh, Cypress pre-configured and basic uh, first test. It just uh, verifies that uh, uh, in this case, the heading is what it should be. Okay, and we this folder is pretty self explanatory when you build your apps and libs. Um, then we also have the different config files like editor config to uh, set different uh, index sizes and character sets or whatever. Also, you get uh, an ESLint uh, RC file that you can uh, configure and extend, you get a prettier out of the box, just as I mentioned. And uh, TS config or TypeScript and two annex specific uh, configuration files. One is uh, NX JSON and the other is workspace JSON. Uh, honestly, I don't know why they didn't have just one configuration file uh, because each of these files contains different stuff. And yeah, uh, you, you'll get used to it once you start using the, the framework to do uh, what contains uh, what. Okay, so the next uh, thing that I'd like to, to show, uh, I just show you before that we can run apps uh, in different terminals, but uh, and this also has a very useful command, run many, that uh, for example, most of you might know if you want to run a script, multiple scripts for, from package JSON, you have to install uh, another npm plugin concurrent run concurrently but in this case uh, you can just use the run many command you give it the target meaning what to do on this many app projects that you that you want to run in this case we, the target is serve meaning we want to serve uh, the projects and we want to serve the to do's project and the api project and also serve them in parallel and if you run the command uh, basically both uh, both apps and the front end and the back end uh, start uh, independently so we don't have to to keep a lot of terminals open Okay.
let's actually uh, see the test. Running. So uh, I'm going to use the NX run to do its end to end tests and uh, run them in, uh, in watch mode. And this will open uh, open Cypress. And we can basically run our test. Starting. And all this is uh, pre-configured. Let's close the test. In the yeah. What what else? Yeah, let's uh, let's try uh, to install the a plugin and see about plugins because we lingered enough on, on this side of uh, initial configuration. So uh, the first command that uh, I'll use is NX list, just to see what, uh, what plugins are available. You see that uh, I already have some internal plugins based on the options that I set uh, once I started the, this project, and also some other available uh, Available plug, plugins plus the community, the community plugins, and uh, I'll add the Next.js plugin next in order to create the presentation web page for, for our app. Usually, it doesn't take uh, really much time to install. Okay, so that's done. We just installed the, the NextJS plugin, and the next step uh, with most of these uh, most of these plugins, you're gonna run a generate command, which uh, initializes the project. Basically, it uses the plugin you just installed to create its initial configuration uh, files. So I'm gonna run uh, g from generate uh, next in it. And next, I'm going to use another generated from the next plugin. You can see there's a G normal next, and then after the columns, you have uh, different uh, things that, that you can generate. So I'm going to generate an application. It will ask me for the application name. Let's say website, a CSS styling option. So I feel pretty old school. I'm going to go with CSS. 
it uh, it created our uh, inside apps the website which is the next.js application and also the associated uh, uh, separate end to end tests okay and uh, if we if we start it uh, never mind we let's just generate also a, a page uh, inside the inside the website so currently you might be familiar with Next.js that it has the pages folder and currently we only have index but for demo purposes we're also got, uh, going to generate uh, a next page the project is website then I should uh, enter and uh, see contact we will create a contact page uh, choose CSS as well and you just see I also have uh, the contact page generated and the associated uh, CSS uh, mod module for, for it. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch branches and uh, show you the completed uh, next uh, next uh, page uh, so i just added some uh, some content inside the uh, inside the pages and some some css and now if we uh, if you we run Just run this implementing it. Yeah, we have our uh, presentation website for for our app. It has two pages. This is the index that got automatically generated, and then we can go to the contact page that we added ourselves. And uh, yeah, basically, it's uh, just an next uh, in the application. Okay. What to note that uh, I can run basically the same build, lean, test commands uh, regardless what type the, the application is. And now uh, I'm going to switch to another branch because we're short on time uh, with some uh, more stuff added on the notes app and on the Express API just to give you an idea of how it might look. I'm going to start both, uh, both in parallel. If we refresh, we get uh, the do app that uh, you can check the goods, add something new, and also save the list on the back end. I don't know if you notice uh, the date is formatted uh, pretty weird, weird, and we want to fix that. And uh, what we can uh, easily do is create a create a npm library. We just uh, 
time function that uses state FNS to uh, predefine the, the whole date uh, display. Let's stop this. So, I'm going to run another command, which is uh, I'm using the node, uh, normal node plugin that all, I already have installed. And the G comes from generate, and I'm going to generate a publishable MPMA library. And I, I'm also specifying the import path, which is the organization namespace and the name of the, of the library. We have to give it uh, a name. So uh, we're going to use the uh, utils. And inside the libs, besides what we already have, the uh, API interfaces, we have the generated uh, MPM library. And it, uh, out of the box, is, it just generates a string, returns a string. But we are going to, to update that. And uh, instead of that, let's use the date uh, format distance from date FNS. I'm going to also add this uh, DIR. Uh, every non yarn specific plugin that you might need on your project, you just use the regular yarn or npm install commands. So in this case, I'm uh, adding date FNS. Okay, so that got installed, and now on the beside my app on to those I'm going to add just uh, call the library. And also here where I'm uh, displaying it as a string, I'm just gonna display it properly formatted. And uh, Had a couple of errors there, but uh, not to spend time debugging. I'm just gonna show you the, the end result. Checking out the, the Intel branch. And I'm going to run the projects again. I'm 
refresh and voila we have the dates pretty formatted with uh like added six days ago three days ago etc and if i add another one it's gonna say that it was added less than a minute ago okay uh i had uh more stuff to show but i'm gonna stick uh quickly just to a couple of more interesting things. Uh, let's just show the dependency graph. Uh, so Ovidio, we should, uh, we have a few minutes left and I think uh, we should try to uh, have some conclusions uh, on your presentation uh, because probably we'll not have time to take into more details. So yeah, if you can, uh, gave us a final overview of your presentation would be great. Yeah, so the final overview is that uh, I hope I captured your imagination and uh, show you how easy it is to bootstrap different kinds of stuff and uh, use the power of a uh, monorepo instead of uh, creating a thousand uh, MPM packages that you have to manually publish, link them together, and do all the wiring uh, yourself. And yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if how much it shows, but uh, for me, this this library, this framework, is really fascinating, and I can see a lot of lots of ways that it it saves time. And yeah. I guess that's it in conclusion. Okay. Uh, we have two questions. We have like three minutes, so please be quick. We have a question okay. from Vlad uh, that uh, is asking, can you deep dive into how we can handle breaking changes? Uh, yeah, regarding breaking changes, I'm assuming uh, uh, you you referring to upgrades you basically uh, you, have, you have a command that you can uh, you can run so you can just say you are my great latest and it will uh, automatically uh, check to see what the latest version of, of the framework generate uh, update the package JSON file and migrate the, and generate the, the migration file. And then after, uh, after that's done, you just commit everything to the, to the repository and uh, anyone who needs to upgrade the, the projects as well, we will just run, uh, make a git pull to, to get all the changes, run a yarn to install all the updated packages, and then run annex migrate dash dash run migrations, give the path to the generated migration file, and it would uh, automatically uh, use. Basically, if you're used uh, to create React app, uh, it has this uh, concept of uh, code mods. It, uh, has some tooling that looks over the existing configuration files and by configuration files. I'm talking about uh, these workspaces, JSON, any JSON, uh, the TS config, uh, linting, and whatever uh, needs to change. Yeah. OK, yeah. sounds good. Uh, let's, let's address, please, quickly one more question. And after that, we'll address them offline. So one more question from uh, Bogdan. Can you run NX apps uh, with Docker? Also, what about uh, hosting, uh, hosting the monorepo as a whole app? As a whole app? Uh, yeah, you can use uh, Docker. I use it, my, use it myself. Basically, uh, I don't necessarily think there's a Docker plugin for NX yet, but you can create Docker files and Docker Compose by hand. And basically, yeah, run run the commands, and uh, what you everything depending on what type of uh, mini app is inside the 
inside the workspace ends up in the gifts folder. So we have a API website, whatever, and in uh, yeah. and you can run the, the NX commands from inside the Docker. And for as for hosting, uh, you would probably host each individual thing that you're building separately. Right, make use of Docker and uh, build scripts to just deploy individual stuff uh, on whatever you, you need to. Okay, or, great. Or maybe someone will write a plugin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. It would be very useful. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I guess our time is up. Uh, so thank you very much, Ovidio, for your talk. Uh, personally, I found out a lot of interesting things. Uh, it's not, uh, or at least I'm not seeing so simple as <laughs> Next uh, Jazz, for example, but for sure we can do a lot with NX. So thank you one more time for your presentation. Uh, we'll have a short break and after that, uh, let's say we'll take a cocktail together with TV. So don't forget to hydrate, water, coffee, or even a cocktail, as I said. See you soon. Thank you.